let's take a look at a question with a non-interest bearing note payable. So in our previous question, we had a note payable where there was a stated interest rate. So we knew that it was a 9% note over three months. Now, what would happen if there was no stated interest rate on the note? Uh, and that's what happens when there's a zero interest bearing note payable. So as you'll see here, let's take a look at the question. So Northern Star borrowed $60,000 on November 1st, 2020 by signing a 61,350 three month zero interest bearing note. Pure Northern Star Inc's November 1st, prepared their November 1st entry, December 1st entry, and the February 1st entry. Okay, so our, our, our uh, November 1st entry, we know that we are going to receive the proceeds from the note payable. So we're gonna receive cash and we're gonna to need to set up a note payable on our statement of financial position, just like in the previous question. So the face, the amount that we received was 60,000. So that's what we're gonna record here. Okay. So now what happens on December 31st, which is where we need to accrue the interest. And there's a small difference here. So I should have labeled this with November 1st. Okay. And then, so then December 31st, we know we need to accrue the interest on the note payable, but in our previous question, we had accrued the interest as interest payable because we would owe the interest, whereas here we don't actually owe any interest. What's gonna happen is at February 1st, we're gonna owe 61,350 for the note. So there's no interest um, changing hands, but we know that we are gonna, that the note's not free. We're not just gonna give back 60,000, we're gonna give back 61,350. So over the three months, the note is gonna cost us this amount, $1,350. So that's the amount of interest that we owe. So previously we knew that we owed 9% interest. We don't know what the interest rate is here necessarily. Um, we could calculate that, but it's not asking us to do that. It's just asking us to report the entry for the interest. So December 31st, November and December, that's two months. So we know we're gonna, we're gonna need, uh, this amount is our interest for three months. We're going to record it. We're going to say out of two or three months to prorate the amount, and that's going to give us $900. So that's the interest that we need to record. And we know we're going to have debit interest expense because it has to go through our income statement. So we need to expense this $900 that we're paying in, in interest on the zero bearing note. But we're not going to set up an interest payable on our balance sheet. Rather, we're going to include the amount in the value of the, of the note payable because as at February 1st, the note payable is going to be worth 61350 So here, we're actually going to credit the note payable. So the note is becoming more expensive as opposed to just an interest payable. And that's going to be our balancing 900 And then at February 1st, when we pay off the note, well, the first thing we need to remember is that we only reported two of three months here. So there's still one month remaining that we need to expense the interest for. So we're gonna have debit interest expense for the remaining one month. So 1,350 minus 900 is gonna give us 450. We're going to increase the value of the note just to keep things simple. We'll increase the value of the note by 450. So now the note payable is 60,000 plus 900 plus 450. And that is 61,350, which makes sense because the next thing we're gonna do in February is pay back the note. So we need to take the note payable off our balance sheet. So we're gonna go note payable, 61,350, and we're gonna go cash. So now we've got the entire liability cleared out. We've got $1,350 going through our income statement as interest expense. And we've recognized the fact that the company did have to pay back this cash of the face amount of the note, which was $61,350.